Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on Access 2013 in which we will create a relation database called Ben's Driving School. Um, to start off we will look at what the definitions of a relation database, primary key and foreign key are. So a relation database has more than one table and the tables are linked together using key fields. So you can see here in this image below we've got three different tables here and they are linked together using these fields which are known as primary keys and foreign keys so a primary key uniquely identifies a record in a table so for example in the artist table we have artist ID which will uniquely identify each artist and we also have a table called genre and we will have genre ID which will be the primary key in this table whereas a foreign key is used to link tables together and create a relationship it is a field in one table that is linked to the primary key in another table so we can see in this example here, the artist ID becomes a foreign key in this table and genre ID becomes a foreign key in this table also. And we've also got in this table album ID which is known as a primary key. <coughs> so the example we're going to look at is called Ben's Driving School. In this database we're going to have four different tables, a student table, an instructor table, a lesson table and a lesson type table. Each table has its own primary key so for example student table has student ID, instructor ID is used for inst the instructor table, lesson number is used for lesson table and lesson type is used for lesson type table. Now we also need to identify our foreign keys in this table so we can see in the lesson table here we bring in student ID and we bring in instructor ID. This will be for example our booking table where we list the details of the lesson as well as which student is booked on the lesson and which instructor is booked on that lesson. So in this case student ID and instructor ID have become foreign keys. We also add in a fourth table to identify our lesson type. So our lesson type has become the primary key in this table and we also have a lesson type there which is known as our foreign key. So the first thing we do, once we open up Microsoft Access, we click on blank desktop database. We can call this Ben's Driving School. Then we need to click on Create. And we can see our table here. We can go to Design View. And now we can give our table a name. We're going to call it Table Student and this is where we add in our field names and this is where we add in our data type. I have now added in the field names for this table as well as the data types. Student ID has been identified as the primary key you can see from this little key symbol on the left here and all our other fields at the moment are short text. Short text is suitable for data types up to 255 characters so all, all of these will be therefore suitable. For title we're going to create a drop down list box so we can click on this drop down arrow on the side here we can click on look up wizard we can get, go to I will type in the values that I want click on next and from here we can type in our values We can click on next and we can click on finish. For surname, I don't envisage a surname being longer than let's say 20 characters so we can limit the field size to 20 characters. For full name we can also limit the field size to 20 characters. We can also do the same for address line 1. We can perhaps for address line 2 we can perhaps do it up to 40 characters maybe if there's a street name okay for town city we can also do up to 25 maybe 25 characters so for postcode we will limit this to a field size of 10 for short text sorry for telephone number we will limit this to a field size of 13 this ensures if someone puts in a telephone number of 11 characters with two spaces in it we can have up to, up to 13 characters for date of birth 
we will make sure the date is in the past so we do a less than symbol with the word date with the open bracket and close bracket and we also have an error message that comes up if for example they enter in the incorrect date so we could enter in something like the date you have given should be in the past or something similar for email we have limited this to a field size of 30 we can also make sure that the user can choose whether they want to enter in an email or not so we use is null for this we can also ensure that the email address should contain an at symbol and also a full stop and we can also make sure that we do not want users to enter in any spaces or a comma or a semicolon we can now go ahead and enter some data in to our data sheet so we right click on we can go click on t uh, table student we can click on view and we can click on data sheet view it says do you want to save the table yes we do now here is our data sheet view now we can see here are the previous titles that we've entered so I'm going to go ahead and enter in some sample data it would be useful if you could enter in at least about 10 records so here is a line of sample data we can now test out some of our validation rules if we for example click on J Smith here we put a comma in there and we try and enter this it comes up with our error message that we defined earlier so we need to make sure we get rid of that or if we take out the at symbol and we click on enter it still comes up with the same error message so we need to make sure we've got the at symbol in there for date of birth we can tell it's in the correct format after you've entered in 10 records you can then go about creating another table so we can click on create at the top here and then click on table and we can rename this to okay we can't rename it while it's open however we can go to design view and we can call it table instructor we can then enter in the appropriate field names and the data types which I will go ahead and do so you will now have something similar to this with instructor ID being the primary key we've also got the details of the instructor such as the title, surname, full name, address postcode, home number and mobile number and we'll also do the similar kind of validation rules we did for our student table so for title we can do a uh, VLOOKUP wizard for surname and full name we can restrict our field sizes so once you've gone ahead and done this if you switch to the data sheet view then we can go ahead and enter in the details of about three or four instructors so I've now added the details of one instructor but you can go ahead and add at least three so the next table we're going to look at is called our lesson table so we can again click on create click on table and we can call this uh, lesson table so what we need to do is switch to our design view and this table will enter our fields in and our data types so for this table we will have lesson number as auto number we will have student ID and instructor ID as number these are both now foreign keys from the original tables which is instructor and student and we need to keep the same data type the original data type was auto number so therefore for this data type we'll choose number for date of lesson we'll have date and time and we'll restrict this to short date and we will also have a validation rule where we make sure the date is in the future so we do greater than or equal to today's date and we'll have a message which says please enter in a future date for start time we'll have the format of short date from this option here and we will also have a validation rule whereby we want the hours between 9 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the evening 
So we will write this in and make sure that this validation rule is applied. For length of lesson, we can have between one and three hours. So we will have this validation text come up if they enter in anything outside of that. For meeting point and lesson type, we will restrict this to 20 characters. We will now make a final table which will be called lesson type. So we can go to create table and we can call this table, we can switch to design view first of all. We can call it table lesson type. Click on OK. And for the first field we will have lesson type. For the second field we will have cost. So for lesson type this was short text in the previous table so we will call this short text. This is a primary key in this table and it will be known as the foreign key in table lesson. And for cost we can do currency. Now we can look at the format of currency and we can see which options there are. For this option we can choose the current option which is perfectly fine. So therefore we'll save this. And now we're ready to set up our relationships between all the different tables. So the first thing we need to do, we need to close these windows. So we'll right click on this, close this window. Right click on this, close this window. Yes, we want to save changes. Right click on this and we'll close this window also. Now if we click on create, we can go to, or oh sorry, database tools, we can go to relationships and then we can add in our tables one by one. So we're just going to change the layout of this, so we'll put the student to the left hand side, we'll put table lesson in the middle, instructor on the right hand side. So what we need to do now is link the tables together. So we can see student ID is a primary key in the student table and it's the foreign key in table lesson. We need to make sure again that they are spelled exactly the same way and that they are also the same data types. So then we can click on this and drag it across to student ID over here. We can tick these boxes. This basically means that when, a table is when the field is updated in one table it will also be updated in the other table. And if it's deleted in one table, it will also be deleted in the other table. So once we've done this, we can click create, and this should create our one-to-many relationship. This side means one, and this symbol means many. So one student can book many lessons. And we're also going to do the same on this side. So we're going to take instructor on this side, and drag it across to instructor ID. Then we make sure we tick these boxes again. We click on create and again we get another one to many relationship. And the last thing we need to do is we need to link this lesson type which is a primary key here to this lesson type which is a foreign key here. So we can drag this across and we can drag it over here. We can click on the three boxes and click on create. Our relationship has now been created.